I don't know about you, but I have been desperate to spend time in other worlds lately. I have been reading a lot of books, watching a lot of TV, playing video games, just trying to spend time in worlds that aren't this one. <laughs> in The Strange Worlds Travel Agency, which is my book, um, there are 10 different worlds um, that are in book one at least. So I had to do an awful lot of world building when I was coming up with the story. Uh, now world building is something I'm really passionate about. I absolutely love creating new worlds. I think it's one of the best ways to uh, kill several weeks. Um, but you can do it pretty much instantly. If you've got an idea about something that can't happen here, let it happen somewhere else. Because when it comes to creating new worlds, the possibilities really are endless. Um, now you'll have to forgive my little mock-up piece of paper because I don't own a printer because I live in the past. Um, I usually do all my printing at the library. So I've had to write all this down by hand, so I hope everyone can read my handwriting. I've divided my paper up into four different sections and we've got first impressions, different world, different rules, tourist or local, and possibilities are endless. So first impressions is really where I start when I'm thinking about world building and I go for a bit of a sixth sense approach. That doesn't mean that everyone's a ghost. Uh, that means that you could take your five senses that your sight, taste, hearing, touch, smell, and also how you feel in your heart. That can be a very, um, a very useful sense, uh, particularly if your characters have gone somewhere that seems really safe and really nice, but they feel afraid. And that makes me want to find out why. It wants me to keep reading to find out more. So when you're coming up with your world, think about the very first impressions that your reader or your characters are going to feel. Um, because we should be able to get a real good sense of what of their senses. So we'll be, we should know what they can see, what they can hear. Don't necessarily tell us it all in the same paragraph because that can be a bit of a sensory overload for you and for your characters. But do let us know. Drip feed it in. Make that world seem like it's all around your reader. Uh, second point, different world different rules. Now that's what I was saying about crime, for example, being legal in the world of Five Lights. Um, you don't necessarily have to stick to the rules that we have. Uh, who's to say that it has to rain water or even that it has to rain downwards? Something could come up out of the ground. Who's to say that things can't be a different colour, that people can fly instead of walk or swim instead of walk if there's no land for them? You don't have to follow the rules of this world at all. You really can do whatever you think as long as you tell us about it. But tourist or local? I thought this one was really interesting when I was writing it down because I hadn't realised that I'd do it. Because in the Strange Worlds Travel Agency, Flick, who's the main character, she is a tourist. She is going somewhere and experiencing it for the same time. But she meets people there who live there all the time and for them their world is perfectly normal. So your character can either have gone to a magical world, so they can be from our world and have gone to somewhere new, or they can already live in the magical world and that's perfectly normal to them. And then the person that you're going to surprise isn't your character at all, it's your reader. And that is great fun. And um, if you do something like that, I would love to hear about it. I think it's absolutely fantastic when readers get to be surprised um, because you're the author, you're the writer, you're in charge. You get to decide who knows what, and when. So you can either surprise your character or you can surprise your reader. Either way, the reader does need to know what's going on, um, either through the eyes of the character or through their own eyes. They need to find out about this world. But how you tell it is going to be different. If they live there all the time, then they won't be standing there going, oh, wow, look at this amazing purple rain that's coming up from the ground. They'll just be saying, oh, it was raining, the purple rain was coming up through the ground and watering the trees as usual. The way characters talk about things that they see will be different depending on if it's normal for them or not. And the last point I've come up with here is the possibilities are endless. And I know I keep saying it and I know I sound like a broken record, but it really is so true. You don't have to copy anything that you've already read or already seen or already played. Um, that doesn't mean you can't steal little bits of it here and there, because I definitely do that. Um, but you can come up with anything at all. You can make bad things good, good things bad, impossible things happen, things that are normal never happen at all. It really is up to you guys. World building is an opportunity for you to make something that makes no sense whatsoever and say, but it's okay because it's in another world. 
In the Strange Worlds Travel Agency, Flick and Jonathan go to 10 different worlds during the story. Uh, so I'm going to read you an extract from one of my favourite parts uh, when they go to the city of Five Lights. And this is the first time Flick has been to this world, so this is a bit of a surprise for her. The City of Five Lights was seated in a sort of universal crease. If there was a map of all the known worlds and their links, the City of Five Lights would have been the centre spread. Due to its abundance of schisms, it was very much used to what other worlds might call the strange or unusual. The place was consistently dealing with magic and weirdness. Even the geography of the place rearranged itself now and again. So no one battered an eyelid when a pink suitcase appeared in the town square and two young people proceeded to climb out of it, pulling the case inside out somehow, before standing and brushing themselves off. Flick watched Jonathan yank the suitcase through and tried to get her bearings as the world bustled around them. The funny thing about visiting a new place is that one immediately tries to liken it to an old familiar place, or even somewhere you've seen on television, or in a picture on the wall of a stranger's house, just to try and make it feel friendlier. It's a rather funny thing in memory. It doesn't work in straight lines. So although Flick had never been to Spain, looking around her at the City of Five Lights somehow reminded her of a Spanish city. The city was split into several quads or squares, though they were all circular so perhaps they should have been called rounds, and each one had a fountain. You could, she thought, if you, if you knew what you were doing, navigate through the city using the fountains as each one was carved with different birds or fish or plants. Fire working out from the fountains were coral pink stone walkways bordered with pink and white cobbles. Tall iron gas lamps stood here and there, dozing in the day before their night shift. Walking along the pathways with carts on wheels or trays hung around their necks were people selling everything from tiny glass beads to bunches of blue and purple fruit to rolls of immense fabrics. Lining the town's squares were shops, packed tight, practically elbowing one another out of the way for prominence on the sprawling streets. Flick let her feet start walking, as feet tend to want to do when they're surrounded by others doing the same, Jonathan following a step behind. She read the signs in the windows and over the shop doors. They said things like, cat skulls, various sizes available, and high quality lightning, buy two bolts, get one free. There was even a very grotty looking shop with nothing but threadbare black curtains hanging in the window and a sign that simply said, inquire within. There were dozens and dozens of people bustling to and fro. At first glance, some of them looked like people Flick might have seen walking down a street in Little Wivens, but a closer look made Flick realise they were not from her world at all. There were people with complex gold and silver rings pinned through their pointed ears, and others wearing gloves that were made for six fingers instead of five. Flick saw a man with ice blue skin who had an array of drop droplet shaped bottles slung on a belt of loops around his waist. He was trying to catch the eyes of passers-by, some of whom slowed down to look at his wares. There was a woman a few yards to his left who looked a little like one of Flick's teachers at her old primary school, aside from the fact she was covered from the neck down in vibrant floral tattoos that actually moved on her skin as if the wind was blowing them. She almost blended in with the flowers and plants she was selling from a small cart on wheels. Look, Jonathan tapped Flick's arm and pointed towards the centre of the square. There were a couple of girls who'd made a space for themselves close by the fountain. One was putting a hat down on the ground, the other was mounting something like a unicycle, except it had a translucent ball in place of a wheel. A crowd began to gather. Are they acrobats? Flick asked, excitement and delight making her hop from foot to foot as she tried to see over people's heads. Performers, they'll do their act and people will donate some trinkets if they like it. The girl on the bubble cycle was pedalling to and fro, faster and faster, until the unicycle rose into the air like a helium balloon. And Flick gasped. The girl on the ground, her sparkly leotard glittering in the sunlight, beamed as several tokens landed in the hat on the ground. She did a backward somersault as if to say thanks. Above her, the girl on the bubble cycle spread her arms out to the sides and pedalled like mad to stay aloft. She reached down and took the hand of her partner, and it wasn't long before the two of them were on the cycle together, the first girl still pedalling, the others standing on her shoulders, both enjoying the applause. Thank you for watching my video about world building. Happy reading, very happy writing. Stay safe and take care. Bye bye.